Hi, so I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about voice. Voice is about making your writing sound like you really wrote it and conveying meaning and attitude that you want to convey to your reader. So voice is essentially um, making your writing sound like you and you do that using syntax, details, and diction. So we know like syntax is sentence structure, details is like you know sensory details, imagery, all that kind of stuff, and diction is your word choice. So. Um, let's take a look. Sentence structure determines the tone for writing, for example, from Stranger in the Village. It did not occur to me, possibly because I'm an American, that there could be people anywhere who had never seen a Negro. And of course, this is from Stranger in the Village. Um, so let's analyze the syntax here. It says, uh, the length of the sentence, oh, sorry, that's an error. That should say the hyphen. Make the sentence seem conversational, as if Baldwin is speaking to you as a peer. He's not saying that in all of my many years as da 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 da. I mean, it's not, it's not making it super formal. He's not lecturing. He's just kind of like, well, possibly, because I mean, he's like interrupting his thought, just like we often do when we're talking. Like, like there was this one time I, I did this one thing, and you know, and it didn't occur to me until later. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay, so syntax, sentence structure, is one way to affect the tone, um, thereby affecting the voice when you write. Okay, let's go on to the next thing, diction. Word choice determines voice and the tone of the text. So now this is uh, from Barbara Kingsolver in The High Tide in Tucson. Art is the antidote that can call us back from the edge of numbness, restoring the ability to feel for, uh, for another. Okay, so if we analyze that, um, oh my goodness. By using the word antidote, what does the author imply about the inability to feel for one another? You know, antidote is like a medical term. It means cure, so think about that. Um, if we change the word antidote to gift, what effect would that have on the meaning of the sentence? So art is the gift that can call us back from the edge of numbness. I mean, it definitely changes sort of the feel of the sentence and actually her message changes if you think about it. And, you know, we'll talk about this in class, but think about that one. Okay, sorry, I'm having fun with this camera. Finally, detail. Um, Using literary devices, you know, imagery, metaphor, etc., and sensory details, you know, I can feel this, I can smell this, see it, okay. It helps the audience understand our own unique experiences. You don't exactly know what, you know, I felt in a certain situation, but if I compare it to something that you do understand, then you have a better understanding. That was redundant, but yeah, okay. So, for example, whenever he was so fortunate as to have near him a hair that had been kept too long, or a meat pie made with rancid butter, he gorged himself with such violence that his veins swelled and the moisture broke out on his forehead. Gross, right? That was really good voice because it was like, ugh. Okay, so the analysis. What effect is the detail? The spoiled hair, the rancid butter, the swollen veins, the sweaty forehead. All those are icky words. So what effect does that have on the reader? How would the meaning of the sentence be changed by ending it after himself? Whenever he was so fortunate as to have near him a hair that had been kept too long or a meat pie made with rancid butter, he gorged himself. Well, we lose that whole second part of the sentence about like the effect, that sort of violent, disgusting effect that it had on the guy eating these disgusting things, okay? So, for, for homework, okay, I want you to come prepared to class on Monday. Um, write a sentence describing somebody with disgusting eating habits, like they chew their fingernails while they're eating, just something like really nasty. It must be one correct sentence, okay, and it must contain at least three vivid details, just like this last one. So go back if you need to take a look at that again. Helps with volume. That's all I have for you. We'll talk about this more on Monday, and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks.